So, um, I briefly mentioned this, and I'll probably keep mentioning it. Apologise if I if I sound like a broken record, but one of the most common questions I ask vets when they call me about cases is, "Can the animal see?" And a lot of vets can't give me that information. Now, the gold standard way of assessing if an eye can see is using the menace response. It's not a reflex, okay? It's a learnt response. Um, it's also a cortical response, and it goes via the optic nerve and via the facial nerve. It involves the cerebellum. The reason that's important, if, you see, uh, if you've ever seen these young Jack Russells with the uh, congenital cerebellum problem, where they're really hypermetric and they sort of shake a lot, they will not have menace responses, but they can see. The reason being, because the menace response goes via the cerebellum, it affects the menace response. So that's an example of an animal that doesn't have a menace response that can see. You've got to be careful when you do a menace not to create any air movement. If you close your eye now and just do this, if you move your hand towards, you can feel that, can't you? So if you stimulate the, um, the sensors around the skin of the, uh, the eyelid skin, you are not assessing the menace response, you're assessing something else, the palpebral response, you're assessing the sensation, the dog's ability to blink. Okay, so we're just gonna run a video now um, of me doing a menace response. So what I'm doing there is I'm, I'm tap, I'm closing, I'm closing off the other eye, okay? So cover the other eye. I'm tapping the medial and lateral skin to ensure the animal can blink. If this dog had facial paralysis, and I'm doing that, it's not blinking, it can't see. Well, it can see, it just can't blink. So I'm assessing first, can the animal blink? It can blink, good. I'm then doing my menace response. I'm trying not to create a draft. I'm whistling to get the animal's attention, okay? So that's a menace response. Really obvious, um, basic thing but that gives you a lot of information about that eye. Can it see? Now, cats, cats are a little bit sneaky in this, that they don't often respond as, as obviously, um, but they do sort of slightly blink. It's just not as obvious as, as, say, with a dog. Okay, another um, visual test that we can do that doesn't involve doing the menace is called a visual placing test. Now, you're not going to do this with a Great Dane, okay? unless you are Arnold Schwarzenegger, um, because you physically can't lift them to the table. But for smaller patients, it's quite good. Um, you place them above the table. If the animal can see the table, they will anticipate being put down to the table. They'll put their leg out. It doesn't always work. So if the animal's really nervous, cats, it can be quite difficult because cats just don't do what you want them to do. Um, but if we watch the video on this, this is a, a little pug who's very enthusiastic. It's quite good, isn't it? He sort of does it automatically as he does it. So that's a really nice uh, test to do. If you're just not sure, it's not really menacing. It's a small animal. You can have a go at picking it up and doing that. And then we have visual tracking. So it's really important that whatever you're using to, to do the tracking or, or the object, it makes no sound because an animal will look towards a sound and it might mean you might be getting a false positive. Cotton wool is really good. Um, and you literally drop the cotton wool into the animal's field of view and see if it tracks it. A good tip for cats uh, in a darkened room, you have your uh, light beam on your ophthalmoscope and move it around. Now again, a bit like the visual placing uh, test, some animals just don't want to play ball. They're too nervous, they're, you know, they think you're gonna do something horrible to them, so they're, they're just not gonna play. But again, we'll show the video on this one. Um, can you see that? So we're dropping the cotton wool. And it's quite, if, if you've got a really cooperative patient like this pug, you can actually do it over each eye to see, you know, if both eyes, both visual fields are working. And then finally, um, we can do 
we can do maze testing and maze testing sounds really complicated it's not um, you can do it in your consult room you can have various objects um, and you can just watch the animal navigating around and see if it if it bumps into things we can do maze testing with the lights on and lights off so there are some um, eye conditions which basically um, manifest as night blindness so a good example is generalized progressive retinal atrophy so we would see that in sort of middle-aged cocker spaniels and they tend to lose their night vision first so these dogs cope really well with the lights on as soon as you turn the lights off they totally change their nose goes to the ground they start bumping into things so again doing maze testing with lights on lights off can give you more information and we're just going to watch a video of just doing a simple maze test in a corridor this is at willows um, and just watching oh sorry the sound 